Hello everyone, it's Kay. How are you doing today? So this is the 23rd of August and this is Monday. So new week started and usually on Mondays um, there, are, there are less volatility in the market. So today, instead of talking about the specific uh, market, I would like to talk about the time cycles because recently I got these emails and comments about time cycles, how to count the cycles. So I will talk about this topic today. So, um, for those who are new to my channel, my name is Kei and I am a full-time Japanese Forex trader who is living in Dubai from July. Before I was in Tokyo, but now I'm living in Dubai. And this channel is all about using Ichimoku to spot trends and also to spot reversals and to improve your trades. And the goal for this YouTube channel is to help you become a non-losing trader. So hopefully you enjoy today's video session. So once again, this is a video session, it's not the live stream. So uh, please enjoy the session for now. So let me squeeze my face and get into the topic. So just a quick disclaimer, as usual, this information today is um, basically based on my own experience knowledge. So when you take trades, please do add in risk. So um, yeah, so let me switch to the chart. So here is uh, the pound CAD and this is daily chart. So the first rule when you want to capture time cycle is that you have to watch the time frame in the daily chart. You can't use the time cycles in one hour chart or a five minute chart because if it's lower than daily chart, then um, there are more noises in the market and you might not gonna be able to capture the uh, you know uh, solid time cycles. So this is also uh, based on my experience. But uh, if you use time cycles on daily chart or above time frames, that works the best. And back in when uh, time cycles was invented by Gochi Hosoda, back then um, there was no lower time frames. There were only daily chart or the weekly chart or monthly chart, and everything was handwritten. So they only knew the start price and close price within the day and also highest price and lowest price within the day. So these four, four price information in day is, uh, was critical to read uh, past and future markets. So time cycle originally was based on the daily chart and still nowadays I find myself that the daily chart works the best to use time cycles and also price theory too. So here is pound cat daily chart. And the most famous question is that, so how do we start counting the cycle? And my answer is simply, you just capture these uh, swing highs and swing lows. So um, simply speaking, hold on, let's see. So if you see this chart, you can identify the swing highs are here. You see these two weeks pointing upwards, and these are the highs. And you see these two lows, these two swing lows, or you can call this one as a low too. So three swing lows and two highs. And you can also count this one too. This is also swing high, and all the way previously, this is also the swing low. So simply you can identify these swing lows and highs, and simply you um, count the number of candles in between the highs and lows. So it's pretty simple. Um, so let me start doing it from highs. So let's take this high on the 19th of July and also the high on the 20th of August. So in between, let's see how many candles there are. So this is on trading view. And on trading view, you can use this uh, data and price. And um, you can simply drag all the way to the right to the next high. And you can find how many bars in between. In this case, there are 25 bars. And 25 is very close to 26. And 26 is one of the key home switch numbers. So in 25 is only one candle difference. 
So this is acceptable. If you see only one candlestick or two different two candlestick dif differences, it's acceptable because uh, time cycles does not always go with the 26 or 17 or uh, nine candlesticks. Sometimes there are one or two differences, which is accept acceptable. So here in this case, on the swing highs for 25, oh, and this is also very important, is that the, uh, so you can, you maybe notice that the, uh, when I draw this uh, horizontal, like a uh, date, date and price uh, indicator, I count, I started counting from this candlestick. Not from this one, but one previous, because this is also uh, one of the frequentest questions uh, is that the, uh, so when you draw, when you count the number of candles, make sure that this candlestick over here is counted as one, not zero. This one should be one. So, in, but in trading view, if you start to count from here, let's say if you go over, exactly over on this candlestick, and if you press the left click, then it becomes zero bar. You can see that it says zero here. And this is not one. So simply if you just move, drag the, this uh, grid all the way to the right in this way, then it becomes 24. And this is the wrong way to count the number of candles. So always you have to start counting one previous. So one previous like this, so that this candlestick becomes one, like this. You see this, this becomes one now. So this candlestick should be one, and you count forward all the way to the right like this, and you get the number of candles in between the highs. So this is, um, I think it up to, up to the platform. Some platform uh, takes the current candlesticks as one and counts it, but in trading view, it counts as zero at the beginning, and so it, it's, it's a bit wrong with Ichimoku uh, way of calculation, which are way of counting the numbers. And sometimes it causes, you know, slight difference, and this is not a big difference, but uh, if you want to be precise, you want to count, start counting one previous. And this is actually very important because this one or two candlestick difference may cause a big difference if you count the number of candles over time, you know, one difference, and the next cycle becomes two difference, two bars difference, and next one becomes three bar difference, and uh, you will have the wrong result over time. So, yeah, you have to have a habit of counting the numbers in the way of Ichimoku like this. So, once again, in between the highs here, there are 25 candles, as we see here, up here. So, Time cycles um, usually go along with the what we call Kihon Suchi numbers. So Kihon Suchi, let me write it out. You can actually find this on the part one to five video series of uh, Ichimoku Basic. But uh, Kihon Suchi, so Kihon means basic or base in Japanese. And Suchi, S-U, C-H-I, sorry about my poor handwriting. Okay, suchi means number in Japanese. So basically, kihon suchi number means basic number. The series of basic number is called kihon suchi number. And this is a series of number. It's nine, starting from nine, and 17, and also you have 26, and also 33, and on and on. So these are the series of numbers, just like Fibonacci levels, you, you know, in Fibonacci levels, you have 61.8% or 38.2%, 50%, uh, you know, 23.6%. These series of numbers are called Kihon Suchi number. And Ichimoku, we take 9, 17, 26, 33. And also there are more Kihon Suchi numbers, like 42, 51, and on and on. But uh, you don't have to memorize everything. If you know only 97026, then th this is okay because these are the basic uh, Kihon Suchi numbers here. So either 9 or 
17 or 26, you look for the candles in between, the highs or in between the lows, and becomes time cycle in that way. I think this is the simplest way to, ca to count the number of candles. Of course, there are many more ways to do it, but uh, in this video, uh, I'm just showing the basic way of counting the numbers. And, oh, by the way, this is also one of the most uh, frequent asked questions is that, so how Goichi Hosoda came up with these numbers, 97026, and he, actually investigated um, you know, many charts in the past, stock markets and uh, indices, and he himself and his team has found that these cycles you know, works in the daily chart. In the daily chart, stock markets, indices, so basically these numbers are based on his experience. So anyways, so 25, right? So we have 25 candles, so, that, so what does that mean? Is that the um, so if we have 25 or very close to 26 uh, candles in between the highs, that means that means if the market keeps going up this way, if the market keeps going up this way, it renews higher. Um, the market might move along with this, for example, this uh, this uh, trend line like this way. If the market goes up this way then when the market was gonna, is going to make, is going to mark the next swing high, is most likely going to be the 25 or 26 candles after the 20th of August. So let's count. So always count one previous, start counting one previous, so that this candlestick on the 20th of August becomes one, and then you, uh, count forward, 25, let's say 25. It's going to be on the 23rd of September. So let me put the vertical line there. So on this 23rd of September, if the market keeps going up this way, then most likely it will mark the swing high. And then it may be traced backwards from there. And this number, uh, this sorry, this future day, future day, 23rd of September is called, um, is called, um, yeah, henkabi, sorry, henkabi. Um, henka means change, and b means day. So simply that means uh, day of change. So 23rd of September could be henkabi, we say, in this time cycle. And 20th of August, and the 19th of July are also called Henkabi because these are also the swing highs with Kihon Suchi number, with very close to Kihon Suchi numbers, and these are all what we call Henkabi in Japanese. And so this is for the highs, and we can do the same on the lows too. So for example, if you take the lows, swing lows on this one, this one, let me put these vertical lines here too. If I simply put the vertical line on the swing low here, this is the 21st of July, and the next next low was, this one was the 12th of August. So in between, how many candles simply you measure by this tool, counting from one previous, so that this becomes one, and count forward, and this was 17 bars. So 17 is, exactly one of the Kihon Suchi numbers. So on the lows, you can see that this is on the 17 bars. But hold, hold on, let's see. In this example, I have to shift it one more because this is technically the next day on this one, the 13th of August was swing low. So sorry, let me just drag one more here to the future and this becomes 18 bars. Yeah, but 18 is still very close to 17. It's not to way off, so this is 18 is, is acceptable for the swing low. So, so that means if the market keeps going up this way, then the next swing low could be marked 18 or 17 bars after the 13th of August. So simply you measure the price, uh, sorry, you measure the number of candles to the future 18 bars, let's take the same number, and it becomes a 7th of September. 
So this is the 7th of September here. So if the market goes up continuously from here, then the market could go up a bit and retraces backwards, but this, this is going to be a swing high, sorry, swing low, sorry, swing low, and the market could go up all the way like this way. So simply this is how you can capture the time cycles and swing lows and highs and capture the future potential Henkabis in this way. But of course, this is not 100% true. You know, sometimes it becomes exactly, the market moves exactly like this, but sometimes it doesn't. But uh, in that case, that is also important because in that case, for example, the market might start to go down this way and marks up here, and this might become swing high. And then afterwards, it might drop all the way down like this way too. This is also the scenario too. Or the market could go up and retraces backwards here too. So anyhow, in this time cycle on the swing lows and highs, we know that these 7th September and 23rd September are the henkabis. So um, initially, you can expect the market retraces and marks a swing, swing low and goes up this way. But if it doesn't move like that, if the market doesn't move like that, then you can create the next scenario by taking this future henkabis. And this is the essence of Ichimoku because Ichimoku doesn't uh, recommend anyone to predict the future. Ichimoku is not to predict the future, but Ichimoku is to understand the market as of now. We have the history of how the market is moving and which price level the market is at right now, but we never know what's going to happen in the future. But uh, we can't just you know, sit down and wait by doing nothing. We can create the scenario logically. And this Henkabi, by capturing the Henkabi in the future, you can create scenarios like this. If the market goes up, so I say if the market goes up this way continuously, then um, this is going to be one of the scenarios. And this is the essence of time cycles. And together with time cycle, of course, uh, to take five lines of Ichimoku is the basics, the basic important uh, strategy. So always, always look at the Kumo, Kijun Sen, Tenkan Sen, Chikou Span locations and angles. And together with that, you can add time cycles and capture the potential future market directions. So right now, I see the Kumo's flat. So in this case, Senko Span B is flat, technically Senko Span A is flat, and Kijun Sen is flat. Chikou Span is touching. So this is where we see range market as per Ichimoku five lines. It's range. So since this is range in market, uh, it might go down. It might go down to the Kumo, or it might be flat all the way until the next Henkabi, 7th of September, or it might go up afterwards. And at this moment, we don't know which way it's going. This is like a, all like 33.3% percentages for these three scenarios. But if the market moves up a bit like this, and if, they, if it causes this Kumo to go up, and Kijun Sen to point upwards, and also Chikou Span to move up above the candles, then that means the market is bullish. So we can expect that the market goes up and retraces, and this is going to be the next swing low, and it goes up like this. So if you see Kumo up, Kijun Sen up, and Chikou Span above the candles, then this scenario is possible. But right now it's range market, so yeah, we're not sure which way it's going. But once again, it's good to know the future Henkab is like this, so that when the day is, get, day is getting closer and closer to these days, then by looking at how the market has been moving until these days, you can create the next scenario based on Ichimoku five lines and also price action. So, but this is the overview. This is a very, very quick uh, tutorial about 
how to count the number of time cycles and also uh, how to integrate the time cycle with five lines of Ichimoku. So hopefully you enjoyed this topic because I got this uh, request to talk about time cycles because recently I haven't really talked about it so I hope you enjoyed it and apply on your day-to-day -day analysis. So hopefully you enjoyed it. So this is it for today's session. So uh, yeah, today's Monday. Looks like the market is a bit ranging, retracing as far as I see the markets right now. So in this timing, uh, you don't have to stick to the chart. Maybe you can just relax and enjoy your day and come back to the chart tomorrow. I think it's, it's good, but looks like these days, as far as I see the market's conditioned every month, like towards the, towards the end of the month, the market becomes active for the last three months. So in the month of August, last week was very active. So this week also could be very active too. So always uh, prepare for the trending market that can happen anytime this week. And with that in mind, please monitor the chart um, yeah, every day every once in a while. Okay, so uh, yeah, I will see you on the next one. And until then, please stay healthy, stay safe, and stay gold. All right, bye for now. Matane. Thank you.